I love it. I love it all. The rain, because I think the rain slows everybody else down. So I feel like, uh, what did I say? I feel like a mermaid. <laughs> I feel like a mermaid and everybody else like dog swimming. You know what I mean? So I be feeling like I'm just fooling out there. So I think it's the rain. I feel like SpongeBob. Hello everybody and welcome back to Run and Gun. I am Evan Lasing and I'm flying solo. That means I have no guests tonight, no additional speakers. So you're just going to hear my annoying voice for, we'll say about maybe half an hour, maybe more. It depends on how long I actually want to talk for. I'm going to catch you up on this past week of football first. So we'll, talk, we'll start with the Thursday night game, Oakland Raiders versus the Los Angeles Chargers. And that was a terrible game for Phillip Rivers. I don't even know what really to say about that game. Oakland's defense was standout. Derek Carr was manageable. Melvin Gordon still had a big day, but Phillip Rivers threw three picks to a and gave up and had five sacks against the Raiders. Did not play his best game, and I do believe they're going to move on. I've heard rumors that Tom Brady wants to go there. Don't know why anybody would want to go there, but they clearly need a new QB after the season. Phillip Rivers just don't got it anymore. The whole Chargers team don't got it. But I'm liking the Raiders. I'm very surprised by them. They were not favorites at all, but they're 5-4 and four now, fighting for a wild card spot. The Chiefs are falling down. They're 5-3, and three, so the Raiders are actually threatening in the AFC West, which nobody could have ever called. And I'm just hoping that something can happen over there and the Raiders make a playoff game. Now, I'm not saying, like, I would. I would the only way I want them to make the playoffs is if they knock the Chiefs out. That would be lovely if they could knock the Chiefs out of there. But Darren Waller didn't have the spe most spectacular game of this season, but he's helping the team. They're all doing good. They're all managing. Josh Jacobs is on pace for Rookie of the Year, and I'd really like to see him get it, but there's a lot of outstanding players out there. But John Gruden is coaching this team very well. The offense is rolling. The defense has just had a standout game, and hopefully they can keep some momentum going for the AFC West race. The... L.A. Rams, on the other hand, lost to the Steelers. So two L.A. losses in one day. Not the best thing, or not in the same day, but in the same week. The Rams lost to the Steelers 12-17. to Pittsburgh now moves to 5-4. and And it was just a standout show for the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Minka Fitzpatrick has been outstanding for, the, for Pittsburgh this year. And the whole defense as a whole has just produced. T.J. Watts looking like an all-pro uh, outside linebacker in the end, and he's just forcing so many sacks, so many forced fumbles, just so many pressures, and that's really helping the Steelers team. They're really threatening over there in the AFC North. I don't think they'll catch up to the Ravens. I think the Ravens are just way too good, but they're currently in a wild card spot, and I'd like to see their success continue. They have a decently easy schedule still. They have the Browns on Thursday night. They have Then they play the Browns again. They have the winless Bengals still, and, but then, of course, they also play the Ravens for a final time. And I think the Steelers could finish off the season 10-6 and six maybe, hopefully, and then get that wild card spot. The AFC is not too competitive right now. So a 10 or 9 win Steelers team, I think, still makes the playoffs over some of these other teams. The Rams, on the other hand, fall to 5-4, and four, even farther down in that competitive NFC West where there are so many great teams and then the Cardinals. But that's the Cardinals also lost uh, on Sunday. But the NFC West... Huge games. We're going to talk more about that in a few minutes. The main thing was Jared Goff has not looked good. Jalen Ramsey, ever since acquiring him, I believe he's given up 14 catches on 16 targets. That's not all pro. That's not what they gave up for him. That's not worth it. And um, it's not looking like the best of trades right now. Talking more about the Steelers, the run game was not there without James Conner. The pass game, I don't think Mason Rudolph is the answer in Pittsburgh. He is... He shows no aggression at all when he throws or plays, and that may be the playbook they drew up for him, but still. he's not. James Washington had a breakout game, but Juju's your number one receiver. I'm going to rant about this all season long, as long as this podcast is going on. You have to throw it to Juju. He's a dangerous man, and he makes big-time plays. You just got to try it more. He had that big catch on second down that made it third and two. It was a huge catch with Jalen Ramsey in the way. He was fighting all day with Ramsey, and... You just got to give him the ball more. Feed that man the rock, and he will make stuff happen. Now, James Washington had a standout season, but once Big Ben comes back, 
It's going to be his team, and I do think the Steelers need to move on from uh, Mason Rudolph after this season. We'll go to the Lions and Bears. The Bears won 20-13. to Matt Stafford missed his first game since about 2011, I believe it was. He had 100-some starts in a row, yeah, and uh, the Lions really needed him there. The Bears team is not good, and I think if they have Matt Stafford start and they win that game, just because of what, uh, just because of the season he's having and the bear, and the season the Bears having, this puts the Bears still in playoff contention. Mitch Trubisky, Mitch Trubisky actually played a great game, throwing three touchdown passes, but still not enough. I think the NFC. I think they're not going to make the playoffs. I think that NFC North is way too good, and I think the wild card race is going to be way too tight. The Eagles own the tiebreaker over the Bears, and so even if the Bears and Eagles finish with the same record, Eagles are going to get that. Now, bouncing back up to the AFC North, Ravens demolish the Bengals. Absolutely demolished. A.J. Green did not play. He was supposed to play all week. Report comes out on Wednesday or Thursday that he's not playing. He's not 100%. So Ryan Finley gets his first start with, a, with no A.J. Green. Loses terribly. Lamar Jackson played outstanding football yet again, making a very big case for MVP. And it's a very, possi- very high possibility he gets it. He had that beautiful 47-yard touchdown run. They had the Heisman offense out there rolling. Ravens are going to be a very difficult team to stop, as we saw from this week and then the past week whenever they beat the Patriots. Now, Baltimore always somehow manages to blow it somehow. Somehow. Don't know how, but somehow. I just said somehow a lot of times in a row. But I do think the Ravens are one of the more dangerous teams in the AFC. And... um. I definitely think they make the playoffs. Cincinnati now drops to 0 and 8. Oh, yeah, 0 and 8 now, and there's no chance in the world they no 0 and 9 now. My bad, guys, but there's no chance that they make the playoffs. But that was a no-brainer. <laughs> never know. You never know, though. You never know. But there is a very high chance that you make um the number one uh, draft pick, get Joe Burrow, and then um. Figure out something in Cincinnati. Protect Joe Burrow somehow. He's got receiving threats if you can lock up A.J. Green. But you can't protect a QB, then there's no point in drafting one. We'll go back to the other AFC North team. The Browns pull off a win over the Bills. The Bills are a great team. Great season all day long. Came down to a Steven Hauschka missed field goal. Wide wide right. And then Browns just pull it away. Baker played a great game. Nick Chubb played, played a great game. And, um... Maybe the Browns do something here. Maybe not. You just got to get you got your third win of the season. You just got to keep improving from there. Build on it next year because there's no chance they make the playoffs after this. That terrible start is not going to help them. They they would need to go 10 and 6. They would need to win out and I don't see that happening. Bills on the other hand now have three losses. They're still in the AFC wild card just because of their easy schedule the first half of the season and but it, even if it's considered easy their team still played phenomenal they still played a stellar defense and Josh Allen has looked like one of the better QBs to come out of last year's draft other than Lamar Jackson of course but hopefully something happens they can make the playoffs and that would just be a great story they're on the rise they're a very young team and I'd like to see them back in it the Chiefs drop one to the Titans ever since Ryan Tannehill's took over the Titans have actually appeared to be a real football team again no offense to Mariota, he was a great player, but he just wasn't the leader for that team. He was not the answer. You get a real QB in there, or not a real QB, it's Ryan Tannehill, but he he's not bad by any means. It's just he has something about him that leads the team a little bit better. Tannehill comes in, Derrick Henry had, these, had a huge game, and Titans defense somehow kept Pat Mahomes out, even though... The Chiefs manage to score 32 points in Pat Mahomes' return. Still lose the game on a... They had a chance to tie, but Caro Santos's field goal was blocked in the closing seconds. Titans recover. That's the game. And that's a rough way to end it. Chiefs now fall to 5-4 and four on the season. No, sorry, 6-4 and four on the season. And hoping that they can make do with it. The Raiders are threatening over there, like I said earlier. And, but... I still see the Pat Mahomes Chiefs just rolling the rest of the way to the playoffs. The Falcons actually, actually a wild week there. 
The Falcons beat the Saints. The Falcons only had one win prior. They beat the dominant Saints, and that was very surprising. Pat, um, Matt Ryan had a great game. They kept the Saints off. No touchdowns for the Saints this game, and Drew Brees was sacked, I believe, four or five times. No interceptions, no turnovers for him, but very, very surprising to see them lose a game like that. It is a divisional game, yes, but still very surprising. So how do you answer that? Drew Brees drops to 1-2 and two as a start of this season. Teddy Bridgewater is 5-0. and oh. we got to wonder what's happening. Maybe it's age. Maybe it's – I'm not really sure what it is, but – it is Drew Brees. He'll come back. It is his team. I, he's not going to get benched. Michael Thomas is still dangerous. He has, He's leading the league currently in yards and catches. And if you just keep feeding him the rock, maybe something will click eventually. Get him more touchdowns, More somehow get him more catches, and then you'll just keep winning. It's, it's the Saints. They're still on top of the division. This loss doesn't mean too much for them. Just hurts them in playoff positioning later. The battle of the... New York teams, the Jets and the Giants. The Jets pulled this one away in a dominant performance by Jamal Adams and a very actual dominant performance by Daniel Jones of the Giants. He had four touchdowns. He played great football. The only, the real surprising part here was Saquon Barkley having a very quiet game. He did not do much. He had 13 rushes for one yard and a few, and I believe five or six catches for 30 yards. Not... You could tell he was still injured. Pat Shermer probably shouldn't have kept him in that long, especially in a game you're losing, in a pointless game like that. And I think they're fighting for a high pick to get a good player. I think they are calling their season done already. They let Daniel Jones come in, and he's playing great football. But they have really no receivers. Darius Slayton won Rookie of the Week. He definitely deserved it. Huge game from him, huge season from him as a rookie. And I'd like to see him just continue that uh, to produce like that. Sterling Shepard's been out this entire season, it seems. Evan Ingram was good at the, he was great at the beginning of the season, has not heard a lot from him. But hopefully they can keep Saquon safe because that is their franchise now, and hopefully they just figure out something because you don't want to see a guy like that go down. And the Jets, on the other hand, are now have now three wins, I believe, three wins, and hopefully Adam Gase... Clearly, oh, this, sorry, they only have two wins. I forgot what week it was, but they only, um, they're not, the Jets are still the Jets. They have Le'Veon Bell. They have no producers. Their defense is the only good part of that team, and um, their whole, de- basically their defense is their offense. Sam Darnold played decently. He didn't play bad, but he was not memorable. It was not a memorable performance. Um, Their main thing here is that the Giants are not good this year, and it could be a little bit before they actually do get good. In the battle of the NFC South, Bruce Arians returns to play the Cardinals, and the Buccaneer, his new team wins 30-27, to and actually Jameis Winston actually had a great game, for passing yards at least. His, he still threw two picks, only one touchdown, so I guess it wasn't a great game, but it made him look better, I guess. He pulled off the win. Kyler Murray's still outplayed him. Kyler Murray is also making a case. There's a lot of players making a case for Rookie of the Year. DK DK Metcalf, Kyler Murray, and um, said his name, Josh Jacobs. I think there's a very real chance that Kyler could pull away with it, but Josh uh, DK Metcalf is leading all rookie receivers in yards, catches, and yards of uh, touchdowns and yards of, or catches of 20 plus yards. But we're not talking about that right now. Um, the main part here is that mm, nothing much really. Tampa Bay doesn't move anywhere. Uh, Tampa Bay's three and six. Uh, Jameis Winston should be benched after this season. We'll see if they can actually draft a quarterback this upcoming draft. The Dolphins beat the Colts sixteen to twelve, and without Jacoby Brissett and Ty, the Colts look hopeless on offense. Can't move the ball, and it's just a Really big bummer for them. I had high expectations. They're going to have to claw their way back into a playoff race after this because Houston, the Houston Texans are really good, and they're going to keep moving. And I'm pretty sure Jacoby's coming back this week, hopefully. But T.Y. is still set to miss a few weeks. I'm hoping that they can both make a speedy recover and carry this team back to the uh, playoff contention. 
because they are a very dangerous defense, very dangerous offense when they're all here. And losing Miami, that's got to hurt. They, I mean, they're, they're rolling on two straight wins, so kudos to them. But uh, there's no, I mean, I feel like they're kind of just tanking their tanking season, you know? Like, you shouldn't be winning at this point if you're clearly in a rebuild. You should just be trying to lose games. So maybe, maybe they don't want to lose. Maybe they're like, hey, we're not a joke anymore. You know, I mean, they're still a joke, but who knows? The Packers beat the Panthers in the Snow Bowl in Lambeau, the first snow game of the year. Christian McCaffrey was stopped very short of the one-yard line. It looked like he got in, but you can't. There's no reviews after that. It wasn't. It was called no touchdown, so they can't review that play. McCaffrey still had a huge day. Going, getting up over 100 rushing yards, only six catches for 33 yards, though. But still, McCaffrey played great. He had one touchdown on the day, and I'd like to see him continue to produce that, lead the league in rushing, lead the league in scrimmage yards, and then just go from there. And he is also in play in MVP contention along with Russ and um, along with Russ, Deshaun, and Lamar. So I'm hoping that something can come out of that. I just love Christian McCaffrey. I love what he's doing in Carolina. With Carolina losing, they bounced down to 5-4. and four. The Eagles, there's now, a, I believe, a three-way tie for the NFC uh, playoff race. Green Bay bounces up to 8-2 and two in a great day from Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. I thought, I mean, it's Aaron Rodgers. It's a dangerous dude. I'm going to say this all the time. Well, Rodgers had no touchdown passes. It was a big day from Aaron Jones, actually. Aaron Jones had the three touchdowns again. This is his second three touchdown, uh, multiple touchdown day. And he's really making a case for like most improved player. He's bouncing around. He's carrying the Green Bay running offense, which there was none before. There was no rushing. The whole offense was Aaron Rodgers. So kudos to him for stepping up and making these giant runs. Sunday night, the Vikings beat the Cowboys 28 24. In a game that was actually reminiscent to me to the Rams, the Cowboys and, uh, had a had the ball down there fourth late in the fourth quarter about 30 seconds left they could have easily kicked a field goal they had all three timeouts you kick the field goal you make a stop you drive down you kick another field goal then you have the win yes it's easier said than done but it still gives you a better shot than chucking a Hail Mary I think you're trying to get better field position than kick a big field goal I mean your kicker Maurer has been making 60 yard field goals all season all career actually so I would have taken that shot. Same with the Rams game. They had three timeouts. They had they were on the 20-yard line. Let Greg Zerline kick that ball in, make it a one-possession game. You had three timeouts. You stop them on offense. You get the ball back, yet you can't do anything with it. So questionable coaching calls there. Yes, they were going for the win right away, but still, there was something easier you could have done. Monday night was a very exciting football game between the Seahawks and the 49ers. Seahawks, of course, coming out with a win there, 27-24 and in overtime. Each team actually had three, two or three possessions each in that overtime, with Russell Wilson being intercepted on the first drive in the red zone, and that ball was returned to the 40. 49ers have great, uh, get down, have great field position. The kicker, uh, McLaughlin, shanks the field goal. So Seahawks get the ball back. They go three and out, or not three and out. They go... No, they were three and out. They got stopped immediately. 49ers get the ball back. They go three and out, punt the ball. Then um, Russell Wilson drives down, has great rushing awareness, runs the ball for first downs, keeps moving, gets great field goal position for Jason Myers, and Myers kick his, kicks it right through as time expires. Great ending to a great game, honestly. That was a very exciting uh, Monday night football game. Always exciting when those two teams play. Russell, uh, Russell Wilson played phenomenal. Other than the pick, he didn't. His stats didn't show how good he actually played, because he had a lot of rushing yards. He had a lot of great throws, some risky throws, of course, but they were still very good. Uh, Jimmy G, I felt bad for him the whole game. He lost Emmanuel Sanders. He had no George Kittle, so his receivers were gone. He had Debo Samuel as his top receiver, who had a great game, eight catches for 112 yards. But I saw so many drops. Just so many drops, and I felt really bad for him because he was making these wide-open throws that were just hitting the receiver's hands, and that's brutal for him. Like, he was trying so hard. He did look a little shaky going down on the game-tying drive in the fourth quarter 
where he started off 0-3, had a huge fourth down completion. And then, again, in overtime, he carried it over where he was still shaky. He he wasn't used to that. He's not used to having to get those game-winning drives, I think. It comes with experience. It comes with more playing. And hopefully it comes when you have better receivers because that's really rough for him. So Seattle bounces up to 8-2. and two. San Francisco goes to 8-1. and one. There are no more unbeaten teams, so that's a little upsetting. But I still really like San Francisco. I think Seattle's definitely going to bring them into question for that NFC West. I think Seattle can trump them and bounce over them. I'd like to see it at least. Uh, let's go with MVP race. I'm I'm liking the MVP race right now. So Lamar Jackson, as I said earlier, Lamar Jackson, Russell Wilson, McCaffrey, and Deshaun Watson. Those are my favorites. Russell Wilson has the best record. Uh, Lamar Jackson also has a great record. I think they both actually have the same record. My bad, guys. But Christian McCaffrey's going for uh, breaking records. Russell Wilson is, of course, doing what he's doing, leading the Seahawks to a great record, putting up big numbers. Lamar Jackson's breaking rush, rushing records as a QB, breaking all kinds of records, has a better 16-game stretch than Hall of, current Hall of Famers. So it's really where it goes. I think whoever finishes with the best record, if their team makes the playoff, then they get it. If their team goes for, but with Russell Wilson and Lamar Jackson, I think they're intentionally both locks for the playoffs. So at that point, it's whoever puts up, if they're QBs, I think it's whoever puts up better passing stats. So I, I do give the advantage to Russell Wilson, but I would like McCaffrey to continue to do what he's doing, break those records, break the scrimmage yard records. Who knows, maybe he breaks Calvin, oh, not Chris Johnson record for um, rushing yards in a season. I think if he does that, then boom, give him the MVP because that's, that's a historic record to have. Now, with the playoff race, you have Cowboys still leading in the NFC, um, I said South, NFC East, the Cowboys are leading. Same record as the Eagles, they're both 5-4, and four, but the Cowboys own that tiebreaker currently. I think the Eagles can actually finish the season 11-5, and five, or at the very least 10-6. and six. They have to win one of these next two games against the Seahawks and the Patriots, not Patriots first and then Seahawks. It's going to be a rematch on Sunday, game of the week. I think the Eagles actually have a good chance of pulling this out. It's going to be difficult. They're both both teams are coming off of a bye. I do like the Eagles in this game. I don't know why I do. I just do. They got Jordan Matthews back. I'm a big Jordan Matthews fan. Carson Wentz has great chemistry with them, and I think that um, they can definitely build off that because catching has been a problem in Philadelphia. And if you keep using Jordan Howard how you're using him, you're going to be phenomenal. Zach Ertz had a huge game. They won because you targeted your best player. That's what you have to do. Alshon's got a case case of the drops this season. Nelson's Nelson. Um, Yeah, it's really all you can say about Nelson Aguilar at this point. I mean, he had two big seasons last season. Not even big seasons. He had two mediocre seasons that were big for him. But he got Carson Wentz's uh, best friend back. Zach Ertz is getting targeted more. And I think the Eagles can keep rolling. Their corners look good. And I think the Cowboys have, are going in their second half of the season. They're actually playing real teams now, as you saw from the Minnesota game. Playing a real team, they lose those games. So I like the Eagles in the NFC East for the rest of the season. NFC North, I'm still giving it to the Packers. I think they hold on. I think they're just way too good. Minnesota's guaranteed a wild card spot, in my opinion. And the other wild card spot, I'm definitely giving to either the Seahawks or the 49ers. I'd like, I think the Seahawks are going to win the NFC West, but I think the 49ers will maintain a playoff spot just because their defense is that phenomenal, as you saw in the, Seahawks, in the uh, Monday night game. The San Francisco defense is the real deal. Jimmy G is, he still needs more work, but he does need more receivers. That's not on him at all. Uh, the NFC South, you still, there, I'm, there's, <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot in the NFC South. You have the Saints, that's all. The Panthers lost. If they would have won, they would have still been in contention for it. But five and four Panthers, I don't think they rise up and beat the Saints in the NFC South. Now over in the AFC, the North, of course, you have the Ravens who are rolling, and the Steelers are actually on the come up. They're five and four. They won four games in a row. I think they continue to do what they're doing. And um, I hope Mason Rudolph gets more comfortable. 
because I like the Steelers team. I love the Steelers team. They are phenomenal. They're playing great football. I'm just hoping Mason Rudolph gets a little more aggressive with his touches, airs the ball out, gets it to Juju, gets it to his other receivers also. James Conner goes back to running, and I just hope Minka Fitzpatrick continues to carry the team like he's doing. Him and TJ Watt are a dangerous duo. The whole team's just dangerous. Steven Nelson was playing a great game. Joe Hayden probably had the game of his life for Pittsburgh. Kept Cooper Cup to zero catches and zero yards on a lot of targets. And I think that was really going to help. That's an eye-opener that their secondary is actually good. Now, the other playoff spot currently belongs to the Bills. Uh, but the AFC East, that's definitely the Patriots division. That's always going to be the Patriots division. Uh yeah, I mean, the Bills, I think they need to keep winning. They, I mean, clearly they need to keep winning. But if they continue to win, I think they're locked for the playoffs along with the Patriots. And then the AFC West, the Chiefs are owning that spot with the um, with the Raiders actually threatening. So can hopefully that continues to, I think that'll be really entertaining if the Raiders continue to roll. They still need to play each other twice, and I think that could be a big outcome in the season fin- in the um end of the season to see who actually makes it. The AFC South is still decently competitive. Nick Foles is coming back this week after the bye, hoping that the Jaguars can continue to roll. Benching Gardner Minshew, but you paid all this money to Foles, you have to give him that. Jacoby Brissett should be back soon, but the Colts still don't have any receivers to help him. So currently, Deshaun Watson's Texans are playing phenomenal football right now. Deshaun Watson is a magician. They have a dangerous receiver. They have a good defense. They just claimed um, Vernon Hargraves, I believe, from the um, uh, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So that bolsters their secondary even more, and I think that continues to help them, and I think they're going to continue to roll. Now, we'll wrap it up on the two-minute warning here with um, teams that I would be – that will surprise me. So I think – and this isn't going to be a big surprise. I think the Steelers will finish the season undefeated. I think they'll win out the rest of the season. They could go 12-4, and four, and that would be surprising, honestly. I mean, looking at their schedule, I don't think they really play many, like, difficult teams. They have the Browns, the Bengals, the Browns, the Cardinals, the Bills, the Jets, and the Ravens. So the only game that is, I think will hold them back is the Ravens game at the end of the year. But if the Ravens are good enough, Lamar Jackson's not going to play in that game. They're not going to play the starters if they already clinched the playoff spot. But, of course, if the Steelers are at that point, um, so if they went out until week 17, they would be 11-4. and four. So if they drop two, then they'll have to play Lamar Jackson because they'll be playing for the AFC North at that point. So I would like to see the Steelers win out. I think they definitely have a real possibility because the Browns are still hopeless. And as we saw, the Steelers' defense can definitely – maintain teams they you saw it earlier in the season against the Ravens they actually held Lamar Jackson to a terrible game and I'd like to see that continue to happen now the other team will go back to the NFC I think the other team that would surprise me is the um hmm that's a tough one I think the Panthers can actually finish decently strong but a team that would surprise me for the NFC be the oh god I can't think of their name oh the Giants sorry I think the Giants are going to shuffle some, or not the Giants, the Redskins, NFC East team. I think they're definitely going to shuffle some players around, try to figure out new positions. Dwayne Haskins is going to start. I think they can win another game. I think they'll beat the Giants. And that would be a real big blow to New York football. But I think once Dwayne Haskins gets more starts and time under his belt, they'll win a few more games. They'll have some momentum going into next season. They're still going to have to fix a lot, but that'd be my surprise, honestly. Like, they're going to switch some receivers in there, going to get Darius Geis back, and I think they'll be a little more dangerous. But that's our two-minute warning. That's all we got here. See, I told you guys it'd be a quick one. It's only me today, so I can only talk to myself for so long, you know? So thank you for tuning in. Definitely watch Penn State Sports Night. They did some really cool stuff with um, the Penn State football game this past week, and... Thank you for listening. All right, I'm Evan Lasik. Good night.
Thank you for watching our latest edition of Penn State Sports Night. If you're a fan of our content, please be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more clips. Also follow us on Twitter at PSSNTV and on Instagram at PSU Sports Night to keep up with the action. For all my colleagues, we are Penn State Sports Night.